you know, I like the fiddle music in my family. I never remember them, you know. They didn't play no, records. They didn't, no, they didn't play records. Huh? They lived, they played rock and roll. I mean, my parents were more modern, and I don't remember my grandparents listening to it either. No. Mm -mm. Well, maybe it wasn't they all around. Moved to the, they all moved to the town. And so I can't say, you know, it wasn't like something I grew up with, so that it's, you know, it's the roots. I mean, that's where the Germans and the Scots and the Irish and the mm -hmm. English, as they moved into the Carolinas and the Virginia and Tennessee, that's the music they played back, back in those days. Yeah. So they were they li didn't listen to the no mountain music. Mm -hmm. So maybe because well, they were more in town. I guess it was probably also the thing that you didn't want to be considered a hillbilly. But mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure as kids they really listened to it. As children they listened to it either. I have to ask. Them. As kids, what? Right. Because you had to, you had to really grown up in the hills or you know been on the farms. Right. And neither of them, I don't think. I think my dad worked on the farm, but you know they were town the town folk. Yeah, they lived in town. Well, the mountain music started from the immigrants. Mm-hmm. You know that's some time back. It so maybe. Maybe that started from the wave of immigrants that came down the Great Wagon Trail from the northeast, mainly Philadelphia, and they came down through the wagon trail, kind of came down through Appalachian, and it, it yeah, veered to the true. to the right. You went to Tennessee and Virginia, and to the left, you went down through the Carolinas. And my see older ancestors, that's what they did. They immigrated, whether in the 1830s or 1840s. But by the Civil War, they were already here. I mean, they were already in the Carolinas. And and they spoke English. They The German was lost. Of course, the language is going to be lost in one generation anyway. As soon as, as, soon as you come in, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, as soon as you come in and, and you go to school and the teacher speaks English, you, you, you know, your German's gone. Well, maybe that's it. Uh, this is what, 1910? When the immigrants came? 19. No. 1830s, 40s, and 50s, prior to the Civil War, there was this huge immigration. I think what it was is they basically said anybody that wanted to come in could. And so I was trying to relate the music when and that. So, if you came in, they either gave you the land or it was really cheap. Right. And since the German immigrants came in, they were farmers, so you wouldn't leave Germany if you if you were wealthy or you had a you know nice house and all that. You wouldn't leave that. You know, there was maybe some that came, younger ones that came just for the adventure to be in a new country. Mm -hmm. But you came looking for a, a better life. You couldn't have a farm in Germany, you couldn't afford it. But you could have a farm in North Carolina or Tennessee or Virginia. Yeah. Now, you had to work it and you had to build it from scratch. Mm -hmm. Clear the land or, you know, like neighbor did, set up a, a mill. I mean, that was like 18, when was that? 18, uh, no, he did, it, he did it in the early 1900s, I think, no? 1910? Mm-hmm. Definitely 1910 to, to mid, mid, midway through the Depression. Well, so in relation to the music, maybe there was more prevalent back then. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Like, yeah, because now it... Now it in my view, it's dying out. Well, that's the reason why your grandfather and grandmother didn't listen to it. 